。而缅甸自从军事政变以来，整个国家的情况非常的糟糕。在缅甸的地理位置，缅甸跟印度是接壤的。这次 Delta 病毒也入侵了缅甸。缅甸的军政府刚开始引进的是中国科兴的疫苗。由于一般反对军政府的人，他们认为中国是和缅甸军政府站在一起的。这件事情虽然中国政府说我是不干涉内政，但是缅甸的反抗政府的很多人。不同意这个看法，所以他们根本就不愿意接受科兴疫苗。他反对缅甸军政府，也不相信军政府攻击他们的科兴疫苗。最新的一个荷兰权威的医学杂志《纽约刀》上刊载香港研究的，这是香港的研究 ，B N T 疫苗产生的抗体是科兴疫苗的十倍。在这个情况里头，缅甸人未必有看到这个讯息，也可能看到了讯息，所以呢，他们更不肯去接受疫苗的接种，疫苗的接种率非常的低。而在缅甸当地的疫情越来越严重的状况里头，缅甸现在已经从抗争变成了内战。勇敢的缅甸人民，我们没有忘记你们。二月一号，缅甸爆发军事政变，五个月了，他们还没有放弃推翻军头，军头也没有放弃镇压。截至七月一号，已经有九百人在镇压中丧命，包括医生。Due to uh, our actions in the COVID pandemic last year, but we have become criminals overnight by the military. Treating and seeing patients is isn't illegal in any part of the world, but in Myanmar. Feeling totally a feeling at controlling the disease. Experts like this epidemiologist from Myanmar are sounding the alarm. Already one of the poorest countries in Asia, Myanmar was ill-equipped to handle the pandemic. But Myanmar ramped up testing and treatment, and even began giving doctors and nurses their first vaccination shots in January of this year. That progress came to a screeching halt on February 1st, when the military overthrew the elected civilian government. Confirmed COVID cases already on the decline suddenly plunged to less than 20 a day. But that, experts say, is due to a collapse in testing. No more than a thousand tests、uh, per day are being conducted, and that's sort of in the context of before first of February, the average was around sixteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand tests per day. You can be immune to the disease, but it's still there. It won't disappear just because your eye is closed. Finally, Myanmar also experienced a similar scenario with India in February and March. Such scenes have become a common sight in Myanmar. People rushing to buy oxygen, either for their loved ones who are critically ill, or to stock up just in case. Doctors say during the last two waves of COVID-19, oxygen supply wasn't in such high demand. But Myanmar's recent wave comes as the country detected deadlier and more infectious variants in June. Prices of these oxygen tanks have doubled, and supplies are low. The Myanmar army recently banned shops from selling oxygen to consumers. They said sales can only be made to hospitals. Yet people are still trying to stock up on them. Recently, a video emerged on social media from the city of Mandalay, showing dozens of people desperately grabbing free face masks, which were being distributed in the city. One image of Myanmar's creaking healthcare realities. Myanmar's army chief has dismissed talks that the country is lacking in medical oxygen supplies. He says that's fake news meant to cause panic. Myanmar is also ramping up its vaccines supply. Two million doses will arrive from China, another two million from Russia. There's also talk that Russia will help Myanmar produce vaccines locally. So far, less than two million out of Myanmar's 55 million people have been vaccinated. The Myanmar army aims to vaccinate half the population by the end of this year, but sources tell me that the country's vaccination program is not on track. 
healthcare workers and volunteers are still on strike, and not many trust the Myanmar army enough to get their vaccinations. CNN 特派记者随着反政府军一路颠簸，来到荒山野岭里的大本营 Camp Victoria, a major headquarters in a nationwide uprising against the country's military junta. For work, Mok. Some 200 volunteers from around the country have come seeking the military skills that they want to fight a regime that seized power in February. They're villagers, young workers, and many are former students who protested the coup and now believe that they must take up arms against it. Sad. It's very sad. They killed many people of our country. This can, uh, this can give me the power uh, to fight uh, the military gender. The instructors are members of the Chin National Front, a long-standing separatist army that is now in alliance with many others under Myanmar's National Unity Government in exile. These raw recruits are on day three of their training. They're only going to get 45 days training. That includes drill, assault courses, and above all, weapons training before they're going to be thrown back into the fight. They equip with local guns. Rebel leaders know more blood will flow. There are more than 15,000 already, and still coming, and still organizing, I mean, mobilizing uh, the armed fighters. And this is what that's, um, the NGG is trying to equip arms for them. So it really is a civil war, isn't it? Leading to the civil war, now is in the kind of a urban guerrilla type, but uh, within uh, months, it will transform into like a, a conventional civil war. 打仗不是半家家酒，反政府军确实有枪，但是远不及军政府的飞机大炮。四十五天的训练能有多少用？谁也无法给出答案。They believe that this is a just fight, but they're short of weapons and rushed through training, and it'll take more than righteousness and shotguns. To topple a military regime. And as the conflict continues, the numbers of dead will rise to a level when, eventually, people may start to lose count. This young teacher says she ran to talk to us when she heard the noise. You want democracy? We want democracy. We don't want military coup. You know, we're surrounded by military, like this guy. I don't, I'm not afraid at all. If we are afraid, we people around here will not hit the bend and the pen. Like many young people, she sees her future being ripped away. We don't want to go back to the dark age. We lost our voice and we had, we had democracy only for 10 years. Because we don't have weapons, we don't have guns, just only we have voice. This is the problem of the people. One girl approaches us shaking. I feel like you're very nervous. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. We are not sick anymore. And even the lines. They are shoulders and two shoulders and two children. I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want you to get arrested, okay? Thank you. All right. She knows her bravery will certainly be punished. But this is a resistance movement built on small acts of great courage.